Hello there. Welcome to the seventh devlog of Labyrinthophobia. I'm Digital Kingdom Editor, or DKE for short. In this devlog, I'll go over what I've accomplished since the last devlog and what I'm hoping to achieve by the next one. Timestamps are on screen now if you'd like to jump to a particular section in this video. Without further ado, let's get into it. I've updated the player death a tiny bit. When you get caught by either the Parasite or the Weeping Angel, a VHS blue screen video shows up, almost as if that's the end of whatever video you are watching, and I feel this makes it a bit cooler when you die. When you get caught, you'll also ragdoll in death. For example, when I get caught by the Sweeping Angel, I'll do my normal rotation towards it, then my character will ragdoll after a couple seconds. This feature is only going to be seen by other players, because when you die, you'll have that VHS blue screen, but other players will see your body ragdoll. The multiplayer mesh, which is the full body character that other players will be able to see when playing the game, can now look up and down, based on if you're looking up or down. This helps to give the game that small attention to detail, and I've been struggling with this for a good while now, but I'm happy that the solution wasn't too bad to implement, and I'm happy it works for my purposes. A pause menu and a pause feature have been implemented. When I jump and press P, it will pause the game fully and a pause menu appears. I've also added functionality for the game to be paused with the escape key, so by pressing P or escape, you can pause the game. In this pause menu, I've also added in a few different buttons. The first is a resume button, which will resume the game when you press it. We then have the options button, which will take you to the options menu that you can find in the main menu of the game, and you can adjust your settings as needed while playing. Lastly is the quit button, which will give you two options, quit to your desktop, which means that you're quitting the game entirely, or quit to main menu, which will take you back to the main menu of the game and leave the current game that you're in. The only thing I have to figure out with this is how to not pause a multiplayer game, because with how it is now, anyone can pause the game, and I don't want that. So later on, I need to figure out some way to solve this. A chat box has also been implemented into the game. On screen, I've got two players inside of the same game. I still have to work on the fading in and out of the chat box a bit, but to access the chat box, just press enter. Now we can type in whatever message we want to, and once we're done with our chat message, we just hit enter again to send it. When a player sends a chat, it will actually update for both players, so both players can see the message that was sent. The second player can also send messages as well, and both chat boxes will update as needed, so the chat box is working really well. Last but not least, I changed the interaction icon from a dot to a hand. This idea was brought up to me by TikTok user Quest3 user or something, and I'm happy to say this was a very easy implementation, and I think it looks quite good. I could probably change the hand to another hand icon that looks a little better, but for now, I think this will work. I know that I've been working on smaller details of the game and not really focusing on the random maze stuff like I said I would, but that random maze stuff takes a while to do, and these little details are essential to the game, but I promise I will get to the random maze stuff soon. I also do plan on still adding in two more enemies, but I realized that I needed to work on finalizing the Parasite and the Weeping Angel before I can do that, so I can have a solo base to work off of for implementation of new enemies. So with that out of the way, let me go over what I plan to have done by the next devlog. Pistol does damage to enemies. This is exactly as it sounds, but the only enemy that can have damage dealt to it right now is the Parasite. So, at least for now, I'll be focusing on dealing damage to the Parasite when you shoot the pistol. Enemy Death Again, this will focus on the Parasite, and I want it to be where it can ragdoll on death, as I feel that it makes the most sense for this game. Pistol Particles or Decals on Bullet Impact What I mean by this is, for example, when you shoot a wall, it's going to leave a bullet hole, and I want there to be something like that in my game. When you shoot the Parasite, I also want it to have some kind of blood particle effect as a visual way to let the player know that they are shooting the enemy and dealing damage to it. Before we end today's devlog, I want to let you all know two quick things. The first is that we've got a Discord server for Labyrinthophobia. If you want the latest updates and notifications on Labyrinthophobia, as well as be able to talk to me in a more direct way about the game, I highly encourage you to join. Link is down in the description. The second thing is that I'm currently working on getting the Steam page up and running for Labyrinthophobia, so you can go ahead and begin wishlisting. I'll try to hopefully have it up soon, but as of right now, I can't really give you a general time frame in terms of when I expect it to be up, but just know that it's currently being worked on. Small bits of progress was still made in this devlog of Labyrinthophobia. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all things with Labyrinthophobia. My name is Digital Kingdom Editor, DKA for short, and I'll see you in the next one.